I think that wherever you go is going to be a valuable experience. Mm. And that even if you go for a short time or a long time, just getting up and living life somewhere that's not your, not your home is, um, is gonna open your eyes to the, to the possibilities in the world. G'day, I'm Rob Malicki from the Global Society and you're watching A Life That Travels. Today I'm in San Diego. We're sitting at a local taqueria, probably what, 10 miles from the border? Um, pretty close. Pretty close to the border with Mexico. And I'm with Andrew Holland, who's an old friend from Australia. Mate, great to see you again. Yeah, it's good to catch up. <laughs> it is, it's been like, like 15 years, so yeah. pretty awesome. And mate, you've got a really interesting story. So how on earth did you end up going from Sydney to San Diego in the USA? So, from Sydney, I, I went to uni in Wollongong, uh -huh. and uh, after my undergrad, I, I started a, a PhD there, and I asked my supervisor if he could help me find an overseas experience during, during my PhD. So that led me to come to San Diego to do some visiting research at University of California, San Diego. Cool, that's a good uni. Yeah, great. very good. Great. Yeah. It's a top 10 university in yeah. the world for, for research, especially medical research. So I had an opportunity to go to a leading research institution in the world. And while I was here, I uh, met a girl, <laughs> got married, had kids, and, and set up a life here in San Diego. It's a pretty nice town, isn't it? How's yeah. it compared to living here compared to like somewhere like Sydney? You know. It's uh, it's closer to Australia than some other parts of America. Mm -hmm. It's a, a pretty casual lifestyle. Um, people like to go to the beach, like to enjoy themselves. It, it's pretty mild weather year-round, so so people are, are out and about in the parks, on the beach, riding bikes. I heard running. 360 days of sunshine per year. Uh, it's <laughs> Is that an exaggeration? You know, we have. <laughs> We have a couple of months where it gets grey. Yeah. It, it probably only rains like a few, a handful of days a year. Yeah. But we have May grey and, and June gloom, where the, <laughs> nice. the marine layer comes in from the ah, from course. the ocean, and, and it gets a little grey and, and grey and miserable. But it, it's it's a pretty good lifestyle here. Nice. And so, and what did you do your what did you do your studies in? So, what did you do your undergrad in to start with at Wollongong? So my undergrad was biological sciences uh -huh. at, at University of Wollongong. Yep. And then I went on to do a PhD in microbiology. Great. And, and so what are you working in now? So now I actually work for a, a biotech company here mm -hmm. in San Diego. We develop um, therapeutics against um, drug-resistant bacteria, uh, among other things. My, a... my particular area of, of interest is, is infectious disease. There we go. <laughs> infectious disease. That's a, what, how does that go down at, at parties when you say, oh, I'm fascinated by infectious diseases? Either people... <laughs> People want me to. People want me to say if the five-second rule is a real thing. That's probably the question I get most often. Sometimes people want to stay away from me because I work with bacteria. They don't want to touch me. And and, and, and is it is it real? <laughs> the five-second rule. Well, I follow. I actually know the answer to that. So I I follow the five-second rule at home. I think, I, I think my kids should always should always eat off the floor, except in bathrooms or in the lab. They're two places where where I don't pick up food off. The floor. <laughs> Probably good advice. So guys, if you're working in a biology lab and, uh, with infectious diseases, don't eat off the floor. I'd take that as probably gospel truth. Um, awesome, so that's that's quite an interesting path. So you did you did your undergrad uh, at, at Wollongong. Did you do any kind of overseas study or anything when you were in your undergrad? Yeah, I did actually. Um, my second year of undergrad, I went to North Carolina in the States. Cool. North Carolina State University. Nice. Um, and that, you know, coming from Australia to America, North Carolina was, was just such a different experience. It was, it's a big university, majority of students live on campus in mm -hmm. dorms, and so we're really 
Like when I got there, I felt like I was in a movie. You know, <laughs> like people live in dorms. There's all this social interaction. Went to parties with kegs. Nice. And uh, and, and just lived the life. <laughs> yeah, it's real. Like I really, I really felt like I was, I was in a movie. That's so epic. Not not um, a good movie. Just like a. <laughs> just just like a, a kind of like just a college movie. <laughs> Um, so you say you say it was very different to Australia. How was North Carolina different to life in Australia? <clears throat> um, you know, I think like, the weather for starters, it, it gets cold. Like North Carolina, it's not like the north of the US where it's like minus 40 and, and they're snowed in most of the year. But it, it definitely snowed while I was there. Mm -hmm. We had snow days. Um, the food is different. You know, a lot of people I met, I was the first Australian that they'd ever encountered in their life, you know, and th that's a unique experience of, of being the first yeah. of, for, someone, for someone to interact with. It's yeah. like I was the ambassador of, of Australia. Like I was <laughs> showing these people what Australia was like. That's you know? really cool. Actually, f funny, funny story on that. So I, um, after my degree, I went and traveled around the world and I um, was in Tennessee, Knoxville, Tennessee for like five months working in a bar. And um, I had a similar experience to that being like the ambassador because I was serving like these two old ladies one day and, and this little old Southern, like it's all the South now, North Carolina and uh, Tennessee's all the South. This little old lady says, oh my gosh, why, where's your accent from? Are you from Alabama? I said, no ma'am, I'm not from Alabama, I'm from Australia. And she had no idea, absolutely no concept of where Australia might be. Yeah. But that's the States. I think that's a beautiful thing about this country is that it's so huge. Yeah. And so diverse. It is. It yeah. is. Like San Diego to North Carolina is probably about as different as San Diego to Australia. True. Maybe even maybe even more so. And and, and you're we're, we're just having a taco inside, which was pretty awesome. Um, and you were saying your wife is from Kansas. So yeah. Kansas again is very different. Yeah, yeah. The middle of the country, they, they have tornadoes. It's flat, it's windy. I don't know, the, the one time I've been to Kansas, it was <laughs> it was nice and pleasant. It was a nice, pleasant spring day, but my wife tells me it's it's cold and windy a lot of the time. <laughs> and tornado, all, all I think about is tornadoes. You tell me Kansas, I have nothing, no image in my head. <laughs> Isn't this funny, psychological bias, right? No image except like cornfields and tornadoes. Yeah, I, uh, that's, yeah, I think they actually have less corn than, than you would expect. Oh, yeah. uh, Mythbusted. <laughs> Um, if, so, so one of the things I love to talk about is, you know, and I'm really passionate about is how that initial overseas study experience just completely transforms the way you see, see things. So what did it do for you? Like obviously you kind of dropped into America, wow, it's really completely different from Australia. What was that change like for you? Did that do something in you? You know, I think <clears throat> I ended up going on study abroad just really, it, it wasn't something that I'd planned very far in advance. Like I hadn't thought, oh, I always want to go study overseas. I always want to go study abroad. Coming from Australia, I guess I, you know, it seemed like too big a hurdle to go to another country, to live in another country. While I was on campus um, in Wollongong, I just happened to see the and, and like a, a flyer on campus for study abroad and I thought oh that's maybe something I should look into mm. and I, I went into the office and they said oh it's actually applications for study abroad are due next week <laughs> so you might so you should just get the application in now and then decide later if you want to go and so I just kind of stumbled into it it's like oh uh, yeah I'll apply I'll get the application in and then then I went and it just completely opened my mind to the possibilities of life, that I don't have to stay in Australia, I don't have to stay in, in Sydney or, or in the Sydney region, that there's a whole world of opportunities around and that I can, I can go anywhere or I can go nowhere, but, but the, choice is, the choice is mine. That's so awesome. And um, I mean, gee, like San Diego, you know, PhD, you know, working in a good company, having having done your research in one of the finest hospitals in the world, that must be kind of crazy to look back on. And, and now, you know, family and, and you know, life, um, that's kind of crazy looking back and just being like, wow, that's a pretty cool path. You know, it, it really is. And I think if I hadn't 
stumbled into my North Carolina experience, I wouldn't have looked for another overseas experience mm. during, during my graduate school. I mean, I would have done my PhD in Wollongong or wherever I happened to be, um, and it would have been a good experience. I would have got you know, a good education, a, a good graduate degree, but just knowing that there are more possibilities in the world led me to, to seek out additional experiences. Like, what else can I do? Yeah. What else can I, can I get out of this experience? And I ended up at an amazing place and, and meeting wonderful people and, and establishing a life here in San Diego. The, the, the thing I love in that is that it's almost like it kind of gave you the hunger to explore. Because it's true, right? Like, you know, you, you, life is full of opportunities and I think we tend to just kind of just trot down the same path. And it's like when you have an experience, whether it's exchange or something else, but you're out, suddenly, boom, you're outside your comfort zone or it's completely new. If that, that's where an expletive coming, you kind of go, fuck, like, there is so much that you can actually choose to do. And it's that, that moment where you're suddenly outside your comfort zone that you have that realization that you can pursue it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the same thing, the same thing happens from here because now San Diego is, is my home, but I can look for opportunities elsewhere. Mm. You know, when... Like Kansas. Like, like Kansas. <laughs> no, well, around about the time that, that I ended up getting this job, I, I had two options for a job. Yeah. One was um, in Maryland on the east coast of the US and one was here in San Diego. But I had that, I had that opportunity. I could look everywhere and I could look for opportunities anywhere and know that I can get up and move to another city or another country and and be fine. Yeah. And then I'll I'll establish myself. Um, I'll I'll make a life and, and and it'll be great. Awesome. And so mate, for for um if somebody was was watching this and they're like, "Oh, I've been thinking about it, or maybe not thinking about it." What would you say to them about the experience and why they should actually do it? I think that wherever you go is going to be a valuable experience. Mm and that even if you go for a short time or a long time just getting up and living life somewhere that's not your not your home is um is going to open your eyes to the to the possibilities in the world let me take that a step further so i l love it right um and if you know for uni students it's great but what about somebody who maybe has finished uni and missed doing that student exchange and you know they're sitting there going like, oh well, I'm like working a job. Yeah, jobs are all right. You know, life's okay. But they feel like there's something more. What would you say to them? <clears throat> I think that you should look for your opportunity wherever it is in the world. Mm. You know, and, and that's something that, um, you know, like I've had opportunities to go and work in Memphis, Tennessee. Great place. I, I love the barbecue. <laughs> um, but I spent a month, two months in, in Memphis. And, and that was a great opportunity. I, you know, during, um, it was actually during my PhD, I went and did a volunteer experience in Ghana. And I got the opportunity for just a month and a half to go live in another country on another continent and be the only white guy in the room. Mm. You know, what was that like? Oh, that that was that was wonderful. I lo I love the Ghanaian people. They're wonderful people. It's a yeah. wonderful country. But it's it, again, it's just something different. Yeah. And it's something that I sought out at that time. Um, and I just took a summer, took a little bit of time off. I looked for a, a volunteer opportunity, and as a scientist, I, I worked in a in a diagnostic lab. So I went to work every day and just got to interact with regular people, which is a completely different experience to, to being on vacation. Okay. You know, I lived with a family, I got up, I caught the bus to work, I worked, you know. That, that, was, that was also an amazing opportunity and it's one of those things that, that anyone can do that. Yeah, totally. You can just take some time off work or take time in between jobs or after school and just look for an opportunity somewhere else. It doesn't even have to be another country. Like you could go to another city yeah, and it's totally. still a different experience than, than where you live. And, and let me ask that. So you, you say about like looking for opportunities. So how do you do that? Google. 
<laughs> that's that's how I, I found this, this opportunity in Ghana. I googled <laughs> volunteer opportunities West Africa. You know, like there it was. Yeah, that was that was it. Did yeah. you, did you hit the like? I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, like you I, end up somewhere, <laughs> something you really weren't expecting. There you go, volunteer opportunity, boom, <laughs> anywhere in the world. Nice. But no, I think I think we are really fortunate that in this day and age that the whole world is at our fingertips. And we can Google and get in contact with people anywhere in the world and, and try to try to find our way. Yeah, it's very, very true. Uh, it's, it's awesome to catch up. Like, it's literally been 15 years since I think I ran into you at the University of Wollongong. Yeah. And like, if you told me then, oh, the next time you're going to see Andrew or the next time you're going to see Rob is going to be in 15 years' time in San Diego at a taqueria <laughs> near the Mexican border. I don't think I would have believed that, so no, life takes uh, you in great directions, I think. I know, it, even like while I was in North Carolina, I never expected to live in the US. Yeah. That was just a temporary experience, it was a year, yeah. and I, I would come home and live my life in Australia. I, I never would have guessed this would have been my life. Epic. There you go, folks. Awesome to chat with you, Andrew. Great to see you, and you I too. do hope it's not going to be another 15 years. Yeah, for sure. Between tacos. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. <laughs>